So, uh, long, interesting road here. I mean, uh, what, what's the experience been like just going from the show, watching yourself on the show, and then obviously, you know, having this huge opportunity coming up on Friday? Um, it's really cool. I just like being a part of International Fight Week. I've always wanted to come out here, but I never had the money to fly out or go on a vacation. And now I'm a part of it. I didn't have to pay for it. Just hard work. So, it's really cool to be a part of. And you talked a lot about, you know, financial struggles and stuff on the show and all that. Being here and, you know, seeing what's right, what you're on the cusp of, what does that mean to you to, you know, finally have this opportunity to kind of change your life? Um, as weird as it sounds, I try not to think about it. I mean, I don't want to try and cash check that I don't even have in my hand yet. I mean, I just want to try and get the job done. And as soon as the money starts pouring in, I can start changing my life. But right now, I just got to win the fight first. Is your, your dad going to be here? Um, he planned on it, but unfortunately, no, for personal reasons. How hungry does it make you, like he was talking about having those you know, problems and wanting to get after the money and getting that big paycheck, how much does that help motivate you to like, win this fight? Um, it motivates me more than anything. I mean, most of my fights, even locally back home, it was just a matter of if I'm eating next week. I mean, I used all those paychecks, all those t-shirt sales, everything, um, pay my rent, pay my car payments to eat. Um, I got pets, so I got to pay for them too, so every fight was to live, and this fight's no different. And, you know, you won your fights on the show pretty handily and stuff. Uh, obviously, you know, you don't have a ton of fights too, but you were very impressive, but you didn't you know, need to show a ton on there. How much do you think you still have to reveal about your skill set that maybe people haven't seen yet? Um, I think my skill set's endless. I'm not done adding stuff. I've added stuff even from since being on the show, and I'm just going to keep improving. I mean, when I lose, I'm going to improve and improve, and you guys will see something different every fight. What was it like being in the house? Was it any different than you expected coming in? Um, being in the house was kind of cool for a bit. Um, it was actually nice not having my phone, just kind of focusing on training. No petty drama with people back home or, you know, just day-to-day -day stuff. Um, after a couple weeks, I got homesick, and it was more so I just want to see my dad, my friends, my close, my close friends, my teammates. Um, but for the most part, it was just keeping in mind why I was there, and it was cool that I only had to focus on the fights. What was it like being the youngest guy in the house? Um, I didn't really think about it too much. It was, I mean, it's cool to talk about, but I mean... Um, it doesn't really matter. I mean, one day there's going to be a guy younger than me that could beat me, so it's just a matter of getting the job done every time. What have you done training-wise since the show? Have you just been doing the same things you were doing before, or have you mixed it up at all? Um, I've been doing the same thing I've always been doing back home in South Shore sport fighting, but I've been adding in some things that DC thought that my game needs, and I think it's just created the perfect fight camp. He was, you know, watching, obviously, just from the outside on the show, it seemed like he was a really good coach to you guys, and he was a strong mentor and really cared. Um, you know, how nice is that to have someone that's, you know, we've seen some coaches that, you know, maybe are a little standoffish or whatever. What was that experience like, just having him be that hands-on? Um, it was really cool. DC really jumped into the coach's role. Um, I mean, he's got this huge fight with Stipe, but being around him, you wouldn't even know. He cared about all of us 100%. And actually, before I walked out for my first fight, he kept asking me, are you okay? Are you nervous? Are you okay? And he was hyperventilating, and I was like, are you okay? <laughs> and like, he was sweating, waiting for me to go out and fight, and I was like, I'm good. You need to relax. But like, it was really cool. Like, the light heavyweight champ of the world cared that much about me, and he's got the biggest fight of his life out of him. How do you think he wins on Saturday? Um, late TKO or a decision? I remember they brought you guys to us uh, maybe like a month or two ago. And ever, ever since then, I mean, what is it like to not be able to say to tell everybody about this and what you've been able to do? Um, it was tough. I mean, I think that these are my two best performances on the show, and the whole experience was cool, and I wanted to tell everybody about it. Um, but I just kept getting back in the gym and keeping my time busy playing video games so I wouldn't talk about it. <laughs> Have you spoken to DC at all since uh, the show? Yeah, I actually bumped into him yesterday. Um, we were talking. He was asking how the weight cut was going, and I was just talking about his fight camp. Um, he checked in on me halfway through the camp, make sure I was working hard if I needed anything. So it was really cool that even after the show, he still cared. It's really because he's, he's preparing for, you know, one of the biggest fights, maybe the biggest fight of his life. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, he jumped into the coach's role 100%. Like, it wasn't just for TV. It wasn't just to get people to like him. Like, he really cared about all the guys on his team. Even when Jordan Burroughs came down to train with us, he invited Team Stipe to come in because it was such a great opportunity. He just wanted everybody to get better. <laughs> What's your video game of choice? Uh, it's a tie between Fortnite and Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> what was the biggest thing that you took from, from DC during that whole experience? Um, just the mentality. I mean, especially bringing in Luke Rockhold and Max and Cain Velasquez, like former champs and current champs, they all say the same thing. When you get to this level, skill is part of the game, but eventually somebody's going to be just as good at you, and it's going to be about who's stronger mentally. How much pressure do you put on yourself to hold on to that undefeated record going into the fight? 
uh, you know, against somebody else with an undefeated record? I'm not really too worried about it. I mean, when I wrestled in high school, I lost my junior year. I lost literally every single match. I didn't win a single one. So not losing, I'm not really worried about it. I'm just focused on winning. Um, if I do lose, I'll shake it off, get back in the gym, and just keep getting better. How many matches was that in your junior year? My junior year, uh, I think I had like 20 to 30. So you 0 and 30? Yeah. <laughs> not a single one. What was that? Was that? What is it like going through that? Um, it was pretty bad. I faced a couple of kids that like I went out there. I was like, all right, this is the one. Like I'm gonna smoke him, and then I just choked. Like I had him beat, and then he would reverse me and pin me, and I was just like, wow, I suck. <laughs> so what did you take away from it? Like how did you grow from those losses? Um, just I honestly just kept my head down. I mean, my senior year, right before wrestling started, I decided I wanted to be an MMA fighter. So it kind of changed my wrestling style a bit. Um, I kind of in a wrestling match or in wrestling practice would be thinking, okay, if this was a fight, this would be a good position. And this is before I had even trained any jiu-jitsu or anything. I was already thinking about fighting, um, but it just happened to raise my wrestling game. I still didn't do great my senior year, but I got a little bit over 500, so big improvement. <laughs> it's was good. your first, do you remember the emotion of your first win? Oh, I flipped out. I threw my, head, I threw my headgear and I ran off the mat. I actually forgot to shake the other coach's hand. I had to go back and I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Give us uh, just your assessment of Mike, you know, be for being on the show to obviously going through a training camp for him now. Um, I think his basics are phenomenal. I mean, there's a reason he's here. He's never lost as a pro or an amateur, but I think that he's going to find out that basics only get you so far. I think my basics are pretty good. His might even be better than mine, um, but I have some tricks up my sleeve that he's not going to be ready for. And everybody always says tricks don't matter, and then they're in front of me and they have no clue what's going on. So I'm just going to try and make it happen again. Being on the show like that, how much are you able to analyze his uh, strengths and his weaknesses, and what are you taking from that into the cage? Um, when I was on the show, I, the day one, I had a journal and a notebook, and I was writing down everybody's names, their strengths, their weaknesses, how they beat me, how I beat them. I've got a number on everybody, and I was ready to beat anybody I had to. That's intense studying. Yeah. And give you something to do when you don't have Yeah, play. I was <laughs> super bored. <laughs> they brought you and Mike back at UFC 223 and broke them. Is that weird? Like having to do scrums knowing that you're going to fight and no one else does? Uh, a little bit. I think a couple people kind of got the hint. Um, I thought it was weird. I thought they'd have us do it separate for that reason. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a little awkward. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it.